So this is our the holy of the holy. This is Ramses the second one. Here inside, there is a surprise for you. If you come to Laksha, one of the places you will want to visit is the Karnak temples. It's not actually one temple, it's the mini city of temples. I am here now, I'm at the entrance with my guide, he's just buying our ticket. So if you want to come here but can't, you can watch this video because I'm going to be showing you around this whole place. Okay. Oh, welcome to Karnak temple. This is a maquette about Karnak temple. By the way, the, Ka the Karnak temple now it's not looked like this. If you look there at the old pictures, mm -hmm. here, all around here, we do a lot of restoration, by the way. So Karnak Temple is the biggest religious temple in ancient world. It's about 200 acres of land. The Karnak Temple is about three kilometers the north of Luxor Temple. Okay? The name Karnak comes from the same village. Karnak is the same village where the people live here. Mm -hmm. But what is the ancient name for the Karnak Temple? The ancient name was called Ibit Sut. And Ibit Sut means the most selected places. Also, another name called Bir Amun, means the house of the god Amun. Amun has a wife called Mut and a son called Honso. It's like the Trinity, like the Christians, you know, the Father, the Mother, and the Holy Spirit. Same philosophy. Yes. Karnak Temple surrounded with mud brick wall. This is mud brick wall, like every temple has mud brick wall. Okay? The main gates from east to west. This is the main gate here, okay? Have a boat. This is a high one, this is a lower one. Lower one. Mm -hmm. This one, the water is very high, flooded, mission time. They use it to bring the stone from the quarry. Okay. Here, there is two obelisks here. Why the obelisk? Obelisk was the symbol of the sun god Ra. Mm -hmm. In the top part here, it's a bit of a chain. In the top, they put electrum. It's mixed from gold and silver. So when the sun shines, it makes reflection. So everybody knows from far away there is a temple for worship. Mm. Like the mosque, we have the minaret. And the, the church, they have the pill. Bang, bang. So this is, was a very good sign from far away. People know there is a temple that worship. Here we have ram-headed sphinxes. By the way, the sphinxes keep the same body but changing heads. So this is the ram. The ram was the sacred animal for the god Amun. Mm -hmm. Okay? This spiral. It was the last edition by the last 30 dynasty. A king, his name is II. Mm -hmm. And you can see the pattern is not it's unfinished. Why? Because the king dies suddenly. When the, the king dies, the worker leaves the job. But what interests me about this temple, it has got the sacred lake. Can you see the sacred lake there? Mm -hmm. It's the only temple, still there is water, but the water is not from the Nile. In ancient time, it came from the Nile, but now we have like from the up. The lake for the priest to make purification before they do the praying. Okay. They do it three times a day. Sunrise, mm -hmm. uh, an afternoon, and when the sun sets. After you pass from here, you go to the forecourt here. This was for the commoners. So the commoners are not allowed to go inside. We have here um, 10 columns. was addition by the 25th dynasty, the Nubian dynasty. Okay. Not all of them collapsed except one here. Okay. Here is a small temple was additioned by a king, his name Ramses the Third, And there is a temple there by the god uh, Honso. That's why you have many temples inside. After you move from the courtyard, from the court here, you move to the Great Hypostyle Hall. The Great Hypostyle Hall contained about 134 columns. This was for the nobles. Okay. So the commoners is there, and the nobles here. Mm -hmm. And when the king become a king the first day, the coronation day, they coronate him here, in this one. The amazing thing is the column in the middle, okay, about 12 of them, is higher than the other one, 120. Why? It's like the difference between the head and the shoulder. So they use this difference to make a windows. You can see the windows? Yes. To, to light the hypostyle hall. I call it like a forest. Yes. And then on the other side, you're going to see obelisk. There were many obelisks here, more than, um, let's say, uh, this is this four and six. This is about almost nine. But now it's still two st still standing. Yeah. But the other ones are, you know, one is broken from the earthquake, and the, the others are outside Egypt. In Turkey, and in America, in Washington, D.C., in Vatican. So it was moved from different uh, countries. Okay. It was taking some of, some of them as presents, some of them they just take it, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, because nobody cares about the monuments in that time, you know. And then, but most, uh, most of the temple, as I told you, collapse but we're going to see more as, as much as we can yeah okay. 
So this is an aerial uh, panorama of the complex of Karnak Temple, mm -hmm. 2001. Here, this is the pylon, but usually here you want to see um, most of the pylons. There is some classic scene, you know, like seeing you see the king holding the enemy from the hair and smite them before the god Amun. But because the king dies sudden, there is no decoration here. Usually, you see this, I'm going to see this here in the Ramses 3. Mm -hmm. have the scene here, the king holding the enemy from the hair to, to show the people that the, the king is very strong. This is the forecourt here, and then the great hypostyle hall here, okay? And here is the obelisk, but there is two, two still standing. Okay. One for Hashemsut and one for, for her father, that most is the first. The Kanak Temple has about eight gates. But this okay. is the main gate. Okay. We do some excavation there. We found some Roman, Roman baths. Mm -hmm. Bath, yeah. So here is the uh, one, ob one obelisk still standing. From the, I show you the maquette there. Yeah. But one is broken. No, still one is standing there. Look, look this sign. What it says? This is the region of the Sadat. You know Sadat before Mubarak. Mm -hmm. it was opening the light show, sound of light show, the time of the region of Sadat in 1972. Look, under the chain of each ram, there is a statue, okay, for Ramses II. So under the, the head of the ram, mm -hmm. there is a statue for Ramses II. It's like seeking for the protection from the god Amun. Okay. Because ram was the sacred animal for the god Amun. Okay. Okay. Look here, my friend. If you, if you, if you stay in the middle here, yep. you walk straight. Look, there is a small um, shrine. And the ceiling is very low. These are the holy of the holies. Okay. Okay. This is where the the golden statue of the god Amun is housed there. Okay. And almost all the uh, construction here by sandstone, by the way, except the obelisk. Okay. So sandstone quarry is about uh, almost 180 kilometers south of Luxor. Mm -hmm. And a place called Jabal al-Silsila, or we call it in English chain mountain, because the mountain looks like a chain. Oh, okay. <laughs> from all the ram here, the second one uh, from the left hand side mm -hmm. is very, very well preserved. This is Ramses the second one. By the way, the barrel here is, is about 42 meters high. It's the biggest in Egypt. This one? Yes, the barrels. <laughs> if you look here, I need in the top, there's some graffitis here. In the top there. You see some graffitis, some uh, French, who was with the French here? A lot of graffiti. I want to hear this and I need to look at the, <coughs> the blocks. Look how heavy. Look. It's very big and very heavy. Yeah. It's more than 30 tons. Yeah. And they use no cement mentioned size. Mm -hmm. No cement. Okay. Look. There's a distance between this one and this one. Look. Use pressure. You know? Mm. That's why I stand for all this thousand, thousand feet, you know? Amazing, yeah? So here, the forecourt, if you look at this side, this are the remains of the mud brick wall. Mm -hmm. When the king died, mm -hmm. they left the work. Yeah. So we leave this mud brick like an evidence. How they reached to the top there? They use it like a ramp to do with the stone in the top. Mm -hmm. the block, until they reach to the highest they want. Then they start to polish and then they would plaster. Mm -hmm. And then they do some carving, mm -hmm. you know, like this, many stages until they finish. Here is a, uh, this side. There's a three chapel or shrines for like like a, like a station, mm -hmm. you know, for the Trinity. The three boats. So they come from the inner side there, and then they move to the part. One in the middle for the god Amun. Left hand side for the son Khonsu. The right hand side for his wife Mut. This was edition by a king called Siti the Second. Okay. And this is the rest of the ram heads there. Look, some bar there and some bar there. So 
So that's the snake. That's the snake, yes. The snake was called Wajit, was the protector of the whole north. Okay. And the vulture was the protecting from the uh, south, called Nekhbe. Mm -hmm. See, it's really well preserved, huh? It is, but, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, small temple from the, from the King Ramses III. Mm -hmm. And here you see the classic scene. The king here, look, he's holding the enemy from the hair and smite them before the god Amun. This is the god Amun here with the two feathers. You see? Yeah. They, they, they back to Amun with a human uh, body and the two two blooms. And here is two statues for one of the shirt. The left hand is in advance. It's kind of like a military, you know? Yeah. Kind of like. And the other side, it's like a mirror, mm -hmm. but here he wore different crown. The crown of the north and the crown of the south. And here, all the statues represent Ramses III after his death. He put his hand on the his chest and wrapped with linen, and he's holding in his hand the symbol of the kingship. Okay. Sometimes the crook mm -hmm. and the fly. And when you go to the most inner side, the Holy of the Holy, the floor gets higher and the ceiling gets lower. So okay. this is our the Holy of the Holies. Okay. We are very lucky. We are like Ramses III now. Yeah. There's nobody here. Yeah. <laughs> Just me and you. <laughs> look, this is, look at the ceiling here. We do some iron to support the ceiling. No? That's good. Look, look. Yeah. There is a lot of restoration. Look this here. This is for the Rams of the Church. Look at his hand. He said, like, Welcome to the God Amun. Okay. He's flying. Okay. But there is, look, 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 look here. It's like something missing. Look. Something is taken from the, from the wall. So this part, yeah, you see. We think here maybe it was gold, mm -hmm. maybe precious material. Yeah. Yes. So it was tooted. A statue here was for what was here. This is from uh, think, uh, granite, black granite. Mm -hmm. The stone is very tough, very hard. Yeah. You can see it, yeah? Look at the two nails here. It's amazing work. So there is a three uh, chapel inside mm -hmm. for like a resting station as well. Okay. For the small boat for, from the Trinity, Amun and Mutan Khonsu. We're going to see the middle one for the God Amun inside. Have a nice things inside. Yeah. seen this Ross the third, but where is his son? One hand, you have the um, incense mm -hmm. for the burner, they have the coal here. The other hand is purified the offering with Nile water. See the Nile water here? And he's holding a vase, look like a key of life from alabaster. And here before uh, the shrine of the god Amun. So this is the shrine. This, okay, here, All right? In the middle, there is um, like an um, altar, and over the altar you have the, sh the small boats of the god Amun. How we know for Amun? Because of the ram. You look at, when you see the ram, and the horn is around the ear, this is, and the sun disk, this is bark, or this boat for the god Amun, okay? okay? And in the middle of the boats, there is a shrine, or a chapel, a small chapel, the golden statue is inside. Okay, so he gives offering here. Okay, and the other side also the same. Look here, Amir. Here he just burnt incense, but here there were a different crown, and this is his name. Look, one hand is holding the burner, the coal, and the other hand he throw the incense. Look, before the bark of the god Amun here. This is the god Amun because of the ram we know, and this is his boat. The uh, the altar, and in the middle of the boat, you have the small chapel where is the golden site of the God Amun. And there is two uh, chamber here, one and two, for storage all the offering inside. Well, this one and this one. Yes. Okay. Here, Mr. Amir, there is one statue, mm -hmm. one block, rose granite, for the King Ramses II, the great builder. Yes. Between his legs, his favorite wife. Her name is Nifertari. 
And now we're going to the Great Hebrew Cell Hall. Okay. You see, look at the Great Hebrew Cell Hall. In 1899, look how was the picture. Yeah. So this is how the you have the this is the wooden for the flags by the way. You use the wooden the, the flags on the top and have about ten barrels. One, two, three, four, all of them about yeah. more than ten barrels. Every king make addition for the death. Okay. You know. Now to the Great Habib Sal Hall. You can see the uh, obelisk appear from here. Mm -hmm. This is for Moses the first, the father of Hatshepsut. Yeah. The one who made first two of the kings. Yeah. yeah. You remember? Yeah. Good. So here, there's two statues here for Tutankhamun and his wife. Look here, Tutankhamun is wearing the crown of the god Amun. But you know Ramses the second, he put his name here. <laughs> Two cartouches for Ramses II. He said, This is me. <laughs> so, this is his cartouche. This is his birth name and his coronation name. But how we know this Tutankhamun, by the way? How we know? Look at his face here. He has a big baby face. Okay. So, we know this Tutankhamun. This great type of cell hall, about 5,000 meters, and started by the king Siti I and finished by his son Ramses II. But Ramses II, he depicted his name in all over the columns. He said, I make this. Inside this great type of cell hall, all the scenes is religious scenes, but outside military scene because the communists they are not allowed to come here. Yeah. They only they go outside. So when they see the king come from the war, you know, very strong. And here you can see Ramses the second make offering for the god Amun and his wife make some offering, many fruits, you know, like and put in a tray. And Amun with the two blooms, so he gives offering for Amun and Mut, and here also for the god Amun men. Look here, this is a really nice scene here. You can see both the gods stay in the boat and they are pulling the bark of the god Amun with the ram. See, this is the boat of the god Amun and all the gods like Horus and the god Honum and the Ramses the second in the middle, yeah? Mm -hmm. And this Horus, they're holding the rope. Look, can you see it? Yeah. So they are uh, pulling the boat of the god Amun. Because mm -hmm. he's the god, he's the supreme god by the way, Amun. Okay. And here, Amir, look here, this is one of the important scenes here. This is the bark of the god Amun, and here Ramses II, he appeared here like a high priest wearing the sheet of skin. And the, here you're going to see some priest wearing the mask of Horus, and here they wear the mask of Anubis. Yeah. This represents the soul of the north and soul of the south. And here also appear, Ramses II appeared like a ruler, he burned like incense mm -hmm. before the bark of the god Amun. So here the king has two power in his hand, the politician power mm -hmm. and the religious power. Here is your present, Ali. What is this? This is scarab rhythm. The scarab for good luck. It was a symbol of the sun god uh, Ra, ancient time, before yes. rising. They call it Khibir or Khibiru. Hmm. Okay? In the Roman period, they don't wear animals like the ancient Egyptian people. So they start giving them good meaning. So the scarab for good luck. And there is next to the lake, here, there is a big scarab from granite. You will believe if you go seven times clockwise, your dream will come true. Okay. Maybe after seven days, after seven months, after seven years, depends about how is your luck. So be ready to go seven times around. Yeah, okay. In this location, by the way, we found something we call it a cache. You know cache or cachette? I think it's a French word. A cache, when you have something like a gold or fortune, you make a will in the ground and you hide it and you cover. Look here, cachette. But I think it's a French word. So there was hiding. We found here in this area all this was hidden in um, 1901, 03. Very nice ones, statues and everything. So here is the obelisk. You know the one in the left hand side for the king that Moses the first, mm -hmm. the father of Hashemsut. And it's one uh, block, granite. People wonder how they get it from the quarry to here mm -hmm. and direct it here. It's about uh, 250 tons, mm -hmm. about maybe 19 or 20 meter high. But the one next to it in the right hand side for his daughter, Hatshepsut. Mm -hmm. This is higher and heavier. Higher about 23 meter high and heavier about 365 tons. Siti, the first, when he attack, when he's in the battle, look his, in his chariot, mm -hmm. look his little arrows. People are scared of him. Look, some arrows in the neck of the enemy. Look here, can you see? So here, when he was in the war, 
fighting and when he returned back to Egypt he came back to Egypt with the, the um, captives mm -hmm. see they tied the neck and he comes back and he this is our captives look here how the fight the hands can you see it yeah okay and this is the Nile look here this is the Nile and this is the crocodiles can you see the crocodiles yeah so in ancient time there was a lot of crocodiles that's why they worship crocodile mm -hmm. they call it they call it sobek And you know something? Ralph the second writes his name in all over, I told you, in all over the columns. Yeah. <laughs> they say, this is me. <laughs> this is um, his um, coronation name. Usir Maitra Sitib Inra. And this title, Sara. And this is also his name again. Huh? This is, is his uh, coronation name. And the title, Nisu And this is the, uh, his birth name. Ra Misu, Ra Misu Miri Emin. Okay. If you look at the obelisk of Hatshepsut, look, some people asking how they erected in this uh, very narrow place. But if you look here, how they put it there? It's like a drop from the sky, huh? <laughs> but actually, her stepson, he built around to hide it. That's why it looks like this. And here is one statue for King Moses III, Rose Runners. He's sitting and hand on his knee, and he's looking at the villages and the city he conquered. Because he was he was a great warrior, great. Um, he conquered everywhere. He made sixteen campaigns. He conquered east, west, north, and south everywhere. So these are the name. Mm -hmm. This is not a cartouche, by the way. This is a shield. You know shield? Okay? Yeah. So all of this are the shields of the of the city and the, the village he conquered. Okay. There's two pillars here, Amir. One represents the south with the Brutus, and then one represents the, the Babyrus. So you can know this is south, this is the north. Yeah, okay. okay. And now you can go to the most sacred part of the temples, which is called the Holy of the Holies. The Holy of the Holy was reconstructed by the half-brother of Alexander the Great. His name is Philippe mm -hmm. And I mentioned before that Alexander the Great was very clever. Mm -hmm. When he conquered Egypt, he went to Siwa and the city of the Egyptian, I respect you and I respect your religion, I start to build and rebuild the ancient temple. So this one been reconstructed again. Okay. It's old relic. Before it was from sandstone, mm -hmm. but the half process of Alexander the Great, he rebuilt this part of the hall. So all the scene here, this is not an Egyptian pharaoh, but this is the half brother of Alexander the Great. He been offering for ritual for the god Amun Min, also for the Amun Ra. So here the altar, in the top of the altar, you have the, the bowl of the god Amun Ra. Mm -hmm. And inside the bowls, you see the golden statue of the god Amun. And the king comes every day to the hall of the hall to make rituals, to make daily rituals. Yeah. That's how we call them. Daily ritual temples. Okay. Look, Mr. Salami here. This is very good condition, the colors. And here you can see the priest when they are carrying this boat of the god Amun, the pharaoh in the front. And here the priest, they leave the holy of the holy and go out to the boat. And the color in very good condition. This is granite, by the way. Not sandstone, but it's very hard yeah. to make carving in this, in this stone. During the Roman period, you see this hole here? Mm -hmm. This is for the horses, like stable for the horses. Look, I need to do some fishing here, cleaning. Here inside, I'm going to tell you a surprise for you. Okay. In the room here, the chamber for the Hatshepsut, there is scenes for her. So to most of the shirt, her steps are defaced. Because nobody can hear. She erected obelisk here. You cannot touch because everybody can see it. So this chapel was for Hatshepsut. And all her image here is chiseled out by her stepson. Obelisk is, is very clear. Everybody sees it. There. Yeah. But here is hidden in the room. Nobody can hear. So he started chiseled out her image and had two cartouches as well. You know? She made offering for the Amun. And here she made this ritual. We call it like Hatshepsut. Ritual for the God Amun Min. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Look at the colors I mean. Color in very good position. Look, they beautify and the Nile water come like a symbol of the king of life. Of the king. Because you have the title like king, not like a not like queen. Yeah. Yes, you got the title Sarah. Look here. That's most of the third. Make off. Look at the colors, Amir. The color in the granite. And the vulture here protecting the king. My God, gift offering for the god Amun Min. And here he make rituals to show that he is physically very strong before the god Amun. So all the seals, the legal seals for the god Amun or the god Amun Min. Look at the headdress. How beautiful. Look. So this is the second part yeah. of our part of Hatshepsut Obelisk because she erected two here. Mm -hmm. This one is second half, broken from the earthquake. This is her uh, second one, still yeah. standing. As you can see here, her obelisk is heavier and higher than her father. Okay. And behind you here is the scarab. You see this crazy tourist, they go around like seven times. Yeah, this is running, <laughs> look the way it's here. So if you go seven times, clockwise, Mm -hmm. Your wish will come true. Maybe after one week, maybe after seven days, or mm -hmm. after seven months, or after seven years. And here is the sacred lake. Mm -hmm. And you can still see the stairs for the place to go. Beautification, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is sacred lake. Sacred lake or sacred lake? Sacred. Sacred. Yeah. Did I say it did I pronounce wrong or right? The sacred is fine. So, uh, Mr. Amir, I will give you now, uh, if you like to go with me back or you like to go, uh, go back by yourself? Yeah, no, uh, we can go back, but I'm going to walk around this place okay. now. Okay, give me a film. Do I have to walk in a certain speed or I can just walk? No, 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 no. Okay, just give me the bag so I can... Uh... But that's not clockwise, yeah? No, do it clockwise. This way? Yeah, yeah, clockwise. <laughs> yeah. It's filming now or no? Really? Okay. Um. So why are they all doing it anti-clockwise? No, 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 it's the, the right way is clockwise. Yeah, okay. Yeah.